Welcome to the On My Workbench channel. In this video, I'll be talking about the different scenarios that could create an SHTF event. The goal of this video is to scare you. To scare you into waking up in regards to your being prepared for an SHTF disaster, be it a natural or a man-made event. I'm hoping this video will get you thinking about getting prepared for when the shit hits the fan. What is the definition of SHTF? SHTF is an acronym for shit hitting the fan. It is used to express that when things go bad, they can go really bad really fast, like shit hitting the fan bad. Preppers use the term to describe scenarios that could lead to different levels of societal collapse. Here are 11 possible scenarios that could cause widespread societal collapse or a shit hitting the fan event that could change our life as we know it forever. Number one, natural disasters. A few natural disasters that could occur are hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, earthquakes, wildfires, and tsunamis. On July 5th, 1992, an 18 foot tall freak wave hit Daytona Beach, Florida. The link will be in the description. Number two, economic collapse. An economic collapse brought on by the U.S. dollar losing its status as the world reserve currency, in turn creating hyperinflation leading to a deep worldwide economic depression. A link will be in the description. Number three, failure of the electrical grids. Widespread electrical outages due to the failure of one or all of the three main U.S. electrical grids due to the age of the grids and their support infrastructure. This could be brought on by weather, a solar CME, an EMP, or sabotage. Number four, a solar flare or a coronal mass ejection. A solar flare, also known as a coronal mass ejection or CME, striking the earth can produce an electromagnetic pulse or EMP. An EMP is an abrupt pulse of electromagnetic radiation resulting from a solar flare or coronal mass ejection from the surface of the sun striking the earth resulting in rapidly varying electromagnetic fields that if coupled into the electrical grid or other electronic systems could produce widespread damage in currents and high level voltage surges also known as voltage spikes resulting in the failure of part or all of the US electrical grids and damage to other unprotected electronics equipments such as telephone internet TV and satellite a CME induced EMP could also damage trains airplanes ships trucks and automobiles the specific characteristics of a particular CME event will vary with a number of factors the most important three are the size of the flare, the duration of the flare, and the angle that the flare strikes the earth. A strong enough EMP could set us back to the horse and buggy days. See the Carrington Super Flare that struck the earth just before noon on September 1st, 1853. A link will be in the description. Number five, a nuclear induced electromagnetic pulse. An EMP, or nuclear-induced electromagnetic pulse, is an abrupt pulse of electromagnetic radiation resulting from the high-altitude detonation of a nuclear device above the surface of the Earth, resulting in rapidly varying electromagnetic fields that, if coupled into the electrical grid or other electronic systems, could produce widespread damaging currents and high-level voltage surges, also known as voltage spikes resulting in the failure of part or all of the U.S. electrical grids and damage to other unprotected electronics equipment such as telephone, internet, TV, and satellites. The characteristics of a nuclear EMP event will vary with a number of factors. The three most important are altitude, location, and the size of the nuclear detonation. A large nuclear device detonated over the state of Kansas at an altitude of around 300 nautical miles would affect all of the continental U.S. and parts of Canada and Mexico. The electromagnetic pulse generated from such a device would extend by line of sight to the visual horizon as seen from the detonation point.
At an altitude of 300 nautical miles, the electromagnetic pulse would easily cover the entire continental U.S. and parts of Canada and Mexico. It would most likely damage electrical and electronic systems on land, sea, in the air, and in Earth orbit. It could damage trains, airplanes, ships, trucks, automobiles, and satellites. A strong enough EMP could put us back to the horse and buggy days. A link will be in the description. For more videos on EMPs, check out the Tin Hat Ranch YouTube channel and the Tin Hat Ranch website. Links to both will be in the description. Two good fictional books on EMPs are One Second After by William R. Forstian, available on Amazon, and Lights Out by David Crawford, available in PDF format. Links to both will be in the description. A factual book by Ted Koppel is also called Lights Out. Mr. Koppel goes into cyber attacks on the power grid more than he does EMP attacks. Available on Amazon. The link will be in the description. Number 6. A Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Attack, also known as an NBC attack. NBC is a military acronym for Nuclear, Biological, and Chemical Weapons or Warfare, all of which are considered Weapons of Mass Destruction, or WMDs. For more on NBC Warfare, you can download the U.S. Army publication FM3-11, Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear Operations, in PDF format. A link will be in the description. Number 7. A Dirty Bomb or the poor man's nuclear weapon. It is the N and one type of NBC weapon. At this time, the most likely type of nuclear weapon available to a terrorist organization would be of their dirty bomb variety. A dirty bomb is a radiological weapon that combines radioactive material with a conventional type of explosive. The purpose of the weapon is not so much to directly kill its victims, but to frighten them and to contaminate the area around the explosion by using conventional explosives combined with radioactive material. It serves primarily as an area denial device against its victims. A dirty bomb should not be confused with a true nuclear explosion, such as a fission or fusion bomb, which by releasing of the nuclear energy produces a blast effect that is far in excess of what is achievable by the use of conventional explosives. Links will be in the description. Number 8. A Biological Bomb. It is the B and NBC. Biological Warfare, also known as Germ Warfare, is the use of biological toxins or infectious agents such as bacteria, viruses, smallpox, and fungi with the intent to kill or incapacitate humans, animals, or plants as an act of war. Biological Weapons, also called Bioweapons, Biological Threat Agents, or Bioagents, are living organisms or replicating entities such as viruses which are not universally considered alive but reproduce or replicate within their host victims. Links will be in the description. Number 9. Chemical Weapons Chemical weapons are the C and NBC. A chemical weapon is a device that uses chemicals formulated to inflict death or harm on human beings. They are classified as weapons of mass destruction, though they are separate from biological weapons and nuclear weapons. Chemical weapons can be widely dispersed in gas, liquid, and solid forms, and may easily afflict others than the intended targets. Nerf gas, tear gas, pepper spray are three modern examples, all of which are considered weapons of mass destruction. Links will be in the description. Number 10. A Pandemic a pandemic is an epidemic of an infectious disease that has spread throughout the human population across a large region, such as multiple continents or even worldwide. The frightening thing about pandemics is that they can be natural or man-made. Throughout history, there have been a number of pandemics, such as smallpox, tuberculosis, and bubonic plague, a.k.a. the Black Death of Europe. More recently, the 1918 and 2009 H1N1 virus and the HIV pandemic, and today's COVID-19 pandemic, a.k.a. the coronavirus pandemic of 2020. Pandemics concern me because they can spread at an exponential rate. One person gives it to two or more, and they give it to two or more, and they to two or more, until it has spread from continent to continent worldwide. Links will be in the description. Number 11. Cyber Attack 
What is a cyber attack? Cyber attacks can be broken down into many types of attacks. Here are three examples of cyber attacks. Number one, cyber warfare. Number two, cyber terrorism. Number three, cyber extortion. They can range from an attack on a single computer to a large-scale attack on a country's entire infrastructure. A cyber warfare attack can be used as an act of war to destroy an opponent's defensive as well as their offensive capabilities. A cyber terrorism attack could be used to damage or destroy a country's power grid and other utilities such as water, sewer, and gas, or to disrupt the air traffic control systems causing widespread flight delays to massive crashes and large-scale loss of life, or to disrupt trains and subways, or to turn traffic lights in large cities to green in all directions. A cyber extortion or financial attack could be used to destroy the banking records of an individual, a single company, or an entire country by destroying its financial computer centers and files. Cyber extortion, also known as ransomware. Ransomware attacks can be used by criminals to extort money from the banking systems of individuals, a single company, or an entire country through the use of ransomware. Links will be in the description. Number 12. Civil Unrest. With the civil unrest that has been going on in some of the larger cities throughout the U.S., I thought I would add civil unrest to the list as a twelfth possible scenario. I don't believe the full-blown SHTF event will be the results of civil unrest, but I do believe that widespread civil unrest could be the results of a full-blown SHTF event. Having said that, civil unrest can be brought on by any number of other causes, such as political, economic, and social anger. Historically, civil unrest has been due to a perceived oppression by one group of people over another, or one group of people having what is perceived as more rights than another group. Civil unrest may be triggered by a single event or from a combination of events, as most are political in one form or another. If one of the groups feels they are not getting what they want, then an event could go from a peaceful protest to a violent riot in a heartbeat. One could start as a simple protest and quickly turn into full-blown, out-of-control civil unrest or riot. I believe in the days after an SHTF event has occurred, if the grocery stores are closed or only open for a limited number of hours a day or a week, and the food supplies are starting to run low and the prices are going out of sight, I believe that's when we will see protests that will devolve into massive civil unrest and into full-blown food riots with widespread violence and mayhem. If you think the rioting and looting that we have seen in the last few months was bad, just wait until the food starts to run out. Check back for part two. Regardless of how or why the shit hits the fan, the results will be the same. Please check back with the On My Workbench channel for more videos on cool stuff. Please subscribe, like, comment, share, and click the little bell. And thanks for watching the On My Workbench channel.